it took me hours to get ready yesterday. I can't remember the title of the print that we're gonna make today. Let me try this again. It takes so much. I don't know how people do this all the time. I'm actually a little bit worried about this cupping. What are the secrets of studio practice? I wanna know all your good and bad habits. How do you make art like a pro? There's so many ways to do so. Do you want to go on an adventure today? Let's go to my print studio. My name is Kyle and this is my print studio. What we are going to be doing is we're going to be making a polymer plate relief. We are going to be using my lovely Vandercook SP15 and we are going to be printing a polymer plate and at this point I've already done some of the behind the scenes work. I have already taken time in Photoshop to prepare the image. We're doing a simple black and white. The Photoshop file was compiled with just using a brush and a mask and it's either white or it's black. It's either on or off and that's what we wanted our stencil to kind of end up being so that when we shot the plate in our New York machine, it would come out more or less looking like it is and have the correct shoulder. Shoulder refers to the heights and valleys of the relief print. The print that we're working on is called Division. I made this a black and white polymer plate relief. Relief print polymer plate. I made this from a polymer plate and it is a relief print. Whatever way that goes. We're making a polymer plate relief. The reason why I'm making this in black and white and not color or in a screen print like I've recently been doing in my artistic practice is I wanted to revisit the polymer plates. I have some outside and I think the biggest like the most logical reason why I'm doing this is because the polymer plates have a shelf life. After so many years the plate actually like the emulsion on the plate stops working, it dries out and I have material that I need to use. So like first and foremost that's why we're making a polymer plate because I have the things to do that. I chose to make this a polymer plate because I wanted to have that high contrast between black and white. I wanted it to be this cellular structure, this organic thing that was split open with a cascade of light. And the black and white styling of a relief print really allows me to play with that negative space to create it into kind of the subject matter of the print. And by that I mean like that white cascading, that's not, that's just paper. That's not ink, that's not an image I put. But by shaping that space, I can make it the subject matter of the print. And this is where relief print really shines, is in that balance between lights and blacks. This is an image of these two explorers in kind of an alien world. I personally think it's outer space. You can think wherever it is for yourselves. But they come across this cube of flesh and organic material and it's opening up and there's this cascade of light kind of streaking out around the whole image of it. What I liked about science imagery, and this probably has roots in my childhood, were those science books, those textbooks, those images, those math equations, those things that you would find in the books that would visually explain something. I had a lot of trouble with reading and writing when I was younger and I believe that because of that I would be more drawn to the imagery that I found in these books as a way for learning information and that is what really draws me towards working with this kind of imagery. After working through Photoshop to create a black and white image, I print out that image onto acetate. This is called a positive film. It has a side that's sticky that will allow the inkjet ink to actually sit on it rather than just run off. And we create a photo negative. So before I hit print, I invert the image so that anything I want to be black on the final print, I make sure is clear here. So that when I take this and I take a unexposed polymer plate, we stick them into a light unit, a new arc machine, which has a crazy powerful overhead lamp and it blasts light down through the stencil and it hits the plate, the unexposed plate, underneath and anything that the light hits hardens and turns into the raised part of a relief print. Anything that blocks the light, such as the black ink, will wash away and leave a valley. And that valley will not be inked in the final print. I've already cut paper, and I've cut a couple extra sheets of paper. This is not the paper I'm printing with, which is... But this is what I have. I have this Legion cover stock that we ordered that I have never really found purpose for, but I figure it will make a good couple proofs while we set pressure and while we set up the registration. What I need to accomplish first is figure out where the plate's going to sit on the paper and where that paper is going to sit in relationship to the boxcar base and then get the base locked in 
go get some ink, ink it up, and then pull a proof. So first things first, we're just going to take some rough measurements and do some paper math. Oh my god, it's so... really hope this uh, sticks down in the press. So our plate is three and all well, three quarters, and then we have a height, six and an eighth. So if our paper is eight inches, ten inches, eight minus four is four, divided by two. So we have a rough border of two inches on this side, two inches on this side. If our height is 10 inches and the plate is six and an eighth, uh, 10 minus six is four, four divided by two is two, and we have a border of two inches. Everything that we're doing here is to try to print accurately, but for all intents and purposes, this plate should end up more or less printing in the center of this box. So it looks like it will probably touch top and bottoms, but it's not going to necessarily touch side to side because I maybe have mismeasured, but that's okay. So let's fix that. The Vandercook has a center line, and that center line hopefully is going to match up with our center line on our private paper, and that matching up to that will be how we begin our registration process. So if our paper is eight inches, and I put a four inch center line on. So we want to match that up with the center line. The press has what's called the dead zone, which is there is a bottom half inch of space that will never be printed. I like to write that onto my template so that I know where to begin measuring when I'm on the press bed. We have to kind of figure out where this line exists in relationship to the bed and to the boxcar and get the boxcar maybe um, positioned and we got to get a plate taped on. So when everything comes off the press, a pretty good estimate is half an inch of dead space that I can't print and we're going to maybe position the plate somewhere. I'm going to maybe try to plop the plate on one inch and a half from the edge of the base. So I cannot finish this print today. Maybe on another day we'll finish this print, but what's happened is that the plate is, let's own it. I left the plate out in the sun on the desk for quite a while where it dried and then it really got a bit more sun bleached than it probably should have and it caused a whole bunch of cupping. And now the plate doesn't sit flat, which means when the rollers come up against it, I'm gonna get a very heavy um, black outline of the plate and I don't really want that. I don't mind every so often if the plate edge gets printed and a bit of the ink kind of hits the paper, but in this circumstance, it's gonna get really heavy and really inked and it's going to look like trash because it definitely will print a very heavy inked, messy black line at the bottom of the print. I know better not to try to print this and what I'm going to do is just shoot a new plate and we're going to make and prepare a new plate for this. I think when we got into the studio and we were filming that day, I knew when I grabbed that plate that it wasn't going to work out. I know just by like feeling that plate and kind of bending and trying to push those curled edges down, it was not going to work. So obviously we tried to make it work. When I got it onto the press and we had put the two-sided tape onto it in an attempt to hear it down, that might have been the only saving moment for that plate, but it was pretty short-lived. Like the moment I started actually peeling the backer off and applying to the surface, I think I got about halfway down pressing the plate and the front edge was already like pulling up. And I know that that's not gonna work. It's a bit of a bummer moment, to be honest. I, I made that plate months ago and we had intended to film months ago and produce this stuff, but we got very much so sidetracked with building and producing the art discourse series. So the plate sat, like I actually had paper cut, I had the plate cut, like I, I was like ready to print the next day and we got sidetracked trying not to feel defeated about it. It's hard when you put time into something and just because you're really busy doing a whole like way too many jobs it got left off to the side and I feel guilt and I feel shame about that because 
I should have just printed the plate. It would have taken an evening. Like instead of like hanging out playing video games, I could have just gone and printed that plate any of the hundred and some odd days between the time I made that plate and the day that I printed the plate while well, trying to print the plate. We're back to kind of plate preparation. With the failure of that plate, I'm gonna now make a whole other plate. For whatever reason, last time I made that plate, I printed out two of the same stencil. I don't know why, I guess serendipitously, I now have a stencil I don't have to go and print. And my fingers are crossed that this stencil isn't garbage for some reason and deemed not usable by me six months ago when I made the other plate. When the polymer plate has gone through the Newark machine and has been exposed for nine light units, we take it out, we use like an old um, photograph tray and we rinse it with water. What's happening is the ultraviolet light has exposed the plate and those parts that that light has hit have hardened into a tough plastic while the parts that the light never hit are soft and can be washed away. And so by slowly working at it, we begin to reveal those valleys in the plate. And a little bit of water, a little bit of time, and a little bit of patience, it begins to reveal the entire topography of the relief plate. When the plate's done, we take that, we blow dry it, and we try to remove all of the moisture as kind of quickly as possible. So we start with newsprint to just gather the most of it. Then we use a hair dryer. And at this point, the plate feels really like kind of gummy and a little bit tacky. And that's mainly due to the fact that you've just waterlogged the whole thing. So we will take that plate, we go outside. The outside's the best for this, honestly. We post expose it. We let the sun do its thing and it hardens everything that's there. And it's an arbitrary length of time, it really depends on whether or not it's nice out or if it's sunny or if it's winter or if it's summer. But the goal is leave it out there for an afternoon, start printing the next day. Welcome back to Shop Talk. My name is Kyle. This is the next day, well, several days since I shot a plate because my first plate messed up completely, really badly. It curled up into a hard rock mess and no amount of two-sided tape was going to adhere to the press bed. But I have a new plate, I have it on the press bed. I haven't totally committed to it, so I thought I'd share with you guys attaching the plate to the press bed, inking it up, setting it all, and registration. I want to make sure that before I commit the entire length of the plate that I check the parallelness of the edges of the longest length of the plate with the grid lines. And I feel really good about that. I've put it as close to the front of the base. I can always put extra objects in here, furniture, but I can't ever push the base that way too much. So at least I know this, I can start here and I can slowly bump the plate up to line up with my registration. You know, just work the plate across as we adhere it down. It's fucking cold in here, man. This ink is real short. Still 10 degrees, but we're ready to print. With our first proof, I gotta make sure that it is registered. I feel like it's looking pretty good up and bottom, but I think left and right I might be a little bit turned in that direction. So I'm just going to take some measurements to make sure that I'm square to the paper edge. Mm. 
130, 140. I took measurements and I've kind of just mapped out where each edge is in relationship to a point on the outside of the paper. So if looking at the numbers, it does seem like I'm a little bit crooked and I'm not as perfect as I could be. So I'm gonna to try to adjust for that. How I'm gonna fix this is I'll put the paper back into, into the press. And when I take a look at the numbers, 156, 159, 158, 154. So these two numbers are very equal and these two are very equal, but they're not quite the same. So I think that I need to adjust some things. I wanna kind of consider what I need to do. If I dropped the cor this corner or raised that corner, it would turn the paper a little bit in this direction, which would be not what I wanna do because I wanna, I wanna swing the paper in this way to close this gap, actually grow this. Hopefully this will grow. I'm touching this nylon and this nylon. So it's balanced here, here, and here. And I wanna take the paper this way. I wanna close this gap. The plate will always print exactly there. So the paper needs to get switched this way, which means I need to give more space between this piece of paper and this nylon. Set at five already. I'm gonna turn it down by say a whole five. And then hopefully this little bit of gap will allow my paper to swing this way. Setting up to register is not a stressful moment for me, at least when it comes to one color. When we are printing many, many colors, it then becomes exponentially more stressful the number of colors you have. I think we're square and we're ready to actually print the edition. Setting up and printing an edition is the magic of making prints. It is that moment that all this work now accumulates into like a 15 minute span where you print for 15 minutes and you have your whole edition and like that's it. Like everything up until this point, the hours that I've gone into it is all for this moment in time. And it's a very rewarding moment when you pull a print, it's not missing parts, it's not missing information, it's working the way that you wanted. That's really where like that moment of magic happens you do feel like a bit of a machine. Wow, wasn't that a great print? We're gonna work some vegetable oil into the plate with a rag, and we're gonna use that to break up the ink and start the cleanup process. We're gonna work the vegetable oil a little at a time. Uh, cleanup was going to definitely take longer than your traditional solvents would, but with a little bit of time, and I'm being just overly patient. I could probably saturate this with oil and be quick and dirty about it, but I'm using as little as possible because um, that's how I like to clean up, just kind of slow and methodically. And when that rag section has got saturated, you try somewhere new and you just keep working away and eventually you'll add more oil to it. So it's working out slowly, the oil will break down the rubber ink and we can take a cleaner rag and mop it all up. We'll give it a degrease at the end and the final cleaning, but right now goal is just to kind of get all of it up. The ink's incredibly cold today, so this is going to take a little bit more more of an effort. At this point, cleaning goes on for like another hour or so. Uh, the camera ran out of battery power and we just, it's cleaning guys. Like it's not, it's not the most glamorous thing. 
we're using vegetable oil, we're using some cut up old towels, and we just work it. We work parts of the rollers first with a dirty cloth, we cycle it to new ones, and we cycle and we keep going until everything is clean. And then we clean it all again, and then we buff it all dry. And that's how we finish cleaning up with the Vandercook. At this point, I still have to sign the edition. I still have to photograph the print. I have to make the online posting and get those images photoshopped and uploaded. I probably have to make some sort of marketing to say, hey, look, I did something, guys. And I think that's kind of the remaining tasks of this. Oh, and, you know, finish editing this whole video together. So just like, you know, the other half of the job. Thank you so much for watching this video. The print is called Division. It's for sale on the website. It's a small edition, so I don't expect it to stay around forever, but you can find that link below. If you've enjoyed this video and you are not yet a subscriber to our channel, please hit that like and subscribe and the little bell icon so that you know whenever we release another video. If you enjoy what Chrissy and I provide through our Spockbox Studio YouTube channel and want to support us in our endeavor to create more videos like this, please consider becoming a member of our Patreon community, The Spark Club. What are the secrets of studio practice? I wanna know all your good and bad habits. How do you make art like a pro? There's so many ways to do so. Stick around, cause you'll find out on Artist Confessionals. Artist Confessionals with Sparkbox Studio. This is printing. We do this 80 times. And then we're done. And then we clean up for an hour and a half. <laughs>